would you buy yourself a glass placard that no. said Scott? No. Neither would I. No way. I would wait for that to be a gift from the company or, yeah, I just wouldn't buy it. It's the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. The rules are gone. The shirt is untucked. Here's Scott and Alley. Office drama. woo <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> it is the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. Like, like, subscribe, and share. So we have this guy who works with us who has the biggest shiner right now. Who? Uh, what? I haven't even seen this. Yes. And I, I don't look at this guy in the face very often just because we don't work together that <laughs> yeah. much. Yeah. We don't collaborate on a lot of things in the office. And today, I just happened to go into our promotions person's office and I was walking back and I made eye contact with this guy. And then he responded to something. I was just joking around. Here's what it was. Our promotions director has one of those. Remember those horses on a stick that you, when you were like four or five, you would put the stick in between your legs. Oh, there's a couple of these still in the house. Yes. Yes. And so I was. Gall- you ought to see Saturday night at my place. <laughs> <laughs> I was galloping around the office. Oh my gosh. And and then uh I was oh and then and then on our promotions director's desk it has like one of those really nice uh what are they called? It, his is like a uh looks like glass and it has his name and underneath it it says Seven Mountains Media like placard type thing. You know what I'm saying? Where it sits on the end of your desk. Our, our promotions director. Asked that's this? what I said. So I picked it up. I was gonna say that's not an award-winning. Well, no, no, never mind. It's, it's not an award. It's like you know when you you go in for an interview, you're sitting at Mr. Butt's desk, and he's got the placard that says <laughs> yes. Mr. Butt's president. Yes, have a seat. CEO or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. So this is the same thing, but it says our promotions director's name, and then it says underneath Seven Mountains Media. So I picked it up. Our promotions director wasn't around. I picked it up and I said, how did he get this? I've worked here for just shy of 18 years and I don't have one of these. No. Well, everybody was responding to me saying that. And so the guy with the shiner, he responded too. Because I said, do you guys have one of these? And he said, no, I don't have one. And I looked up. Oh my gosh. Huge shiner. Wow. Right. Then I asked everyone else and everyone said, no, they think that he bought it for himself. Which oh I thought you meant the shiner I'm no. like he, what did he do no. go pay somebody fifty bucks to punch him in the eye we'll get back to the shiner oh God, I'm but sorry we're on the glass you, placard would, would you buy yourself a glass placard that no. said Scott no. neither would I no way I would wait for that to be a gift from the company or yeah I just wouldn't buy it I'm I, still waiting for them to actually put a parking spot sign in both of our spots I figure. We are just shy of 18 years together. I yes. mean, within like a couple weeks. I figure by the 20th anniversary, there better be a sign in my spot, which I park in every single day, and your spot where you park in every single day. Uh-huh. But I'm still not buying it for us. No, no, me neither. Me neither. Although I do have a parking sign that Zach's mom got me, and it sits at my desk, and I think it says like... <laughs> Handicap stickers don't count, Allie. Radio- <laughs> no, it's like radio person parking or something. Really oh. cute. When yeah. we first started dating, she got me that. Not, mm-hmm. I, not that I was dating Zach's mom, but when Zach and I first started well, I dating. I mean, whatever. Right, right. You do kind of date the family, don't you? Oh, you never are with just one person. No, not yeah. at all. Okay, back to the shiner. Yes, I'm dying to hear about this. <laughs> so, so did you ask everyone in the office what they think how the shiner happened, what? as opposed to going to the person with the shiner and saying, <laughs> I got to know. That's exactly it. Of course. How is. do you think he got the shiner? Um. I need to know who it was. Hold on, I'll be right back. You, okay. Excuse me. Right here. <laughs> I wonder if that picked up on the mic. Uh, well, we might have to bleep that out. We'll we'll find out. Okay. So now now you know who has the shiner. How Is this you... individual in a relationship? Do we know? I. Thought that too, but then I thought, well, domestic violence isn't funny. No. Although I could see it like accidentally happening. Oh, no. I was not thinking that at all. I was thinking that this individual got clocked. Uh, got clocked. Yeah. No I, idea how. I but thought because that, when I found out the name, I'm like, mm. isn't this funny? We've worked with this person for probably at least six months now. I know nothing about them. Nothing. I know nothing about their personal life. I know one personal thing about them, but. I don't believe he has a significant other. Okay. No, no. Okay, so now how do you think he got the shiner? I, I got a. I think that there was a kerfuffle 
somewhere. Bar fight. Uh, if not a bar fight, something similar to it. Was he helping in some sort of security matter? Uh, manner? Was there... Because we do have someone here that actually does check IDs as a side hustle going into a theater. Oh. Not that our theaters, oh. like our movie theaters, <laughs> need your yes. ID checked, but you know... I thought like a concert venue. The one thing I do know about this guy is that he is a mobile DJ on the side. Oh, well, then that could have been it because I have a mobile DJ story. I have a couple of them for you. One of them you are aware of my very first ever uh, mobile DJ gig when I was like a little baby DJ. Did I, you, do, you, do you remember this was the wedding and the, uh, oh, the all metal music It was the all metal music? Oh, this story. I'll never forget it. So uh, if anyone has never uh, known this about me, and, and this is sort of the way the industry, a lot of times in any form of entertainment, you don't start out hosting the tonight show, you know, I mean, look at where Fallon came from. I mean, he mm-hmm. he worked his way up to getting to that level. Same with wh- whether you're doing DJing. I didn't just walk into uh, a, a decades long morning shows and things like that. I-, I had to start somewhere, and I started doing mobile DJ work. And the very first wedding I got assigned to from a buddy of mine, uh, it was uh, a- an all metal wedding. Now, when you're at a wedding, you've got every age group. You've got you know people that are seniors that want to hear Sinatra. You've got yes. people that want to dance to the 90s or maybe some 80s stuff I here I want and there. the chicken dance. Yeah, you know, this was uh literally I was told and it was very early in the 90s so you know what the metal sounded like right that you know mm-hmm. back then. I mean even I had big hair back then, right? Right. And they just wanted With the system. to scream it. that was not a system actually. Uh-huh. Oh, that, that was the real that deal. That was the real deal. Um but they wanted screaming metal music for everything and even when the older folks came up and they're like yeah, maybe some Elvis or something I'm like I can't this is what they told me to do. So I I don't know I, something you know he, she's my cherry pies playing or whatever and all of a sudden i see the bride come ripping across the dance floor blah, and it, odd scene for a wedding right yeah and they hadn't done any of the like first dances or anything like that to uh you know the only non-metal song which would have been love of a lifetime from firehouse which <laughs> normally was a metal band so you know it was um it, she just goes screaming by, and then of course some of the bridesmaids go screaming by, and then she comes up, or somebody came up to me. It wasn't the bride. Somebody came up, and they're like, "Shut the music off. The wedding's off. The wedding's over. This and that." And I'm, I, what and, and as they're walking away, yeah, we caught him. He was screwing the uh, maid of honor in the limo. Wait, this is your first wedding. This is my first wedding DJing ever. Not only was it the weirdest set of music, it was the groom screwing the maid of honor or maid. Yeah, it was the maid of honor in the limo. Oh my obviously God. got caught by the uh, bride. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sure there were shiners exchanged for that. Now, sticking with the mobile DJ theme, I'll give you another one. This one didn't happen to me. This one actually happened to my buddy Justin. Also, the guy that I work for that booked me for the all-metal wedding. Thanks a lot, buddy. Mm-hmm. So Justin he was doing a wedding, and it was a uh, all-Italian wedding. Now... Uh, from Fun. what I, what I understand, and it wasn't like all Italian music, but we're talking like uh, you know, uh, it was like the Jimbronis and the Bag of Donuts families coming together, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So at any rate, let's say Tony Bag of Donuts came over, and he had told my buddy, he goes, "Now listen, if it turns out the groom's dad shows up, he's not allowed in because there'll be a fight." Oh my and god! We're all sitting there now. I I wasn't there, mind you. I I was called to help clean this up, so I got this story like right after it happened. Mm-hmm. So, uh, lo and behold, the groom's husband or the groom's uh, or I'm sorry, the bride's father shows up with the brother, and I guess also was banned. I don't know the story behind it. There was some sort of family drama. What you, you can imagine? Yeah. Holy crap! There were literal chairs being thrown in this reception uh somebody flew over my buddies they used to call them dj coffins literally isn't that ironic that's where the turntables used to sit when you'd carry records yeah and your mixing board somebody flew over that my, my buddy was telling me because he was all disheveled when i got there like he was sitting in a chair he's like oh my god he goes i'm screaming at people get off my stuff get stop fighting uh-huh. the cop showed up arrested people it was epic so you know there was a black eye at that wedding. Do you think that still happens at weddings that nowadays? I think, I bet you it does. It's so funny because, first of all, I want to go back to the metal wedding. This would never happen the way it happened now. Because now you as the DJ, let's say DJ Scotty Scott, 
that you would meet with the bride and groom beforehand and say they did say, because it sounds like you guys didn't meet beforehand. No, I had no involvement. This was set up. Right. It has changed since 1990. Yeah, let's be real. You, you meet with them. Do you also go over a list? Because I think at that point you would have said, we're going to do something besides metal. we got to play for everyone, right? Yeah, DJs have way more power now and cost way more than they did back then. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, you're right. There is a, listen, you got to cater to, uh, you know, more than just yourselves. They were adamant. From what I was told by my buddy, he goes, they were adamant yeah. that they wouldn't pay if there was anything but money. Now, I mean, I, metal. So. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised, I guess, if it happens every once in a while. All I know is, so I've never DJed a wedding. But I do know that I bartended one this past summer. So I still do some bartending on the side. Yeah. And I do it for a wedding venue. Now, there was no issues there, but people were so drunk. Yeah. So yeah. drunk. Like, partially my fault because I'm the one serving, but they also had well, a party. Well, they kept coming. They kept coming. They had a party bus. It was... And the, now, this is something that's different, too, that's evolved over the years. They have a bride's drink and they have a groom's drink. Now, you don't have mm. to drink that, but a lot of people do because it's there. It's like in a cute little frame. And it said hers was a margarita mm-hmm. and then his was an old fashioned, which is Ooh, that'll kind, wreck you. <laughs> right. And it's kind of first of all, it's kind of a difficult drink to make. But that's that's here nor there. Not that it's difficult. It's just can be time consuming. You, know, you can't whip them out like you can a whiskey and ginger. Exactly. You're pouring and, and spr- spritzing, you know? Exactly. So uh, people were so drunk. I could see how this could turn, mm. which is why I think that our coworker got a shiner from DJing a wedding it's or possible. a fundraiser or something like that. It's huge, though. Oh, boy. Like, now, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know how he's going to go see clients. Why because did you? Every client you have to explain. Well, he won't. Don't worry about it. But how would you? <laughs> how would you, do you? Have you thought about going up and saying, "Dude, no, you got to spill the beans." No, because I'm not close with him. If it was somebody else, we work with another guy named Jeff, and Jeff, not that me, you, and Jeff are close. But I feel like we've worked together a lot recently. Yeah, we could ask the question, where did the shiner come yeah, from? Yeah, we could joke now, around and be the, like, the response Jeff, from Jeff, baby. <laughs> what happened? The response from Jeff, instead of, oh, yeah, I was DJing a wedding, at wedding and somebody threw a glass. The response from Jeff would take four and a half hours and three <laughs> meetings to complete the story here nor there. Yes. But, you know. What a salesman, right? Oh, man, it's good. So yeah. that's the, the drama in the office right now wow. is, is the shiner. I got to know. I'm going to have to find out. Oh, we'll, we'll let you know next week. Oh, my gosh. All I right. know. I know. Okay. Wow. And then Scott said he had a crazy thing. Uh, well, and it's funny. It ties into this. I read this story and I immediately thought of you and I'm like, holy crap. I listen. Sometimes in relationships, people get mad, right? You oh, know, you're yeah. going to have a fight. You're going to get frustrated. People are going to do stuff or say stuff they don't necessarily mean. Now, when I tell you in a minute how this, what you would think was a crazy act, maybe not, came about, you're going to say, oh, okay, now that I know this part of it, I can understand there is a lot more feelings than there is not. We're going to come back to that in just a couple seconds because we have to take a quick break and let you know the official sponsor of the Scott Nally Show. But remember, the unofficial sponsor sponsor of the Scott Nally Not For Air podcast is the Hakalugi Ale, both in a shandy and, of course, a pale ale. Smooth going down like jello and awful slimy. Try one today, Hakalugi. The Not For Air podcast is brought to you by Allison Aesthetics. What started out as me wanting juicier, plumper lips, well, then I found out that Allison Aesthetics was so much more. Got this amazing facial. You can see the glow there. And then a little bit of Botox just to get rid of some fine lines and wrinkles and prevent them too. And then I found out they do hair removal. Yes, please. And it didn't even hurt. I swear it didn't hurt. Make sure you follow Allison Aesthetics online and book with them today. Welcome back to the Scott Nally Not For Air podcast. Now, when I read this to you, I'm going to I'm going to give you a trigger warning. It's gross. However, it is racked up. This was when I read this originally, over 350,000 views. uh, And it's obviously grown since I originally grabbed this story. Mm -hmm. And it's headed headlined like this. Okay, it's official. I'm not crazy yet. And you might hear what happened and go, oh, you're crazy. But then you're going to understand, maybe not so crazy. Okay. So the question also goes, when did you realize that you were crazy? According to a video (laughs) that this girl made, she is a former Hooters waitress and a TikToker. She realized she was crazy when her ex 
told me, meaning her, that he cheated on her. Okay. So she took her tampon out out and threw it at his face. (laughs) (laughs) That is the best response ever. Don't call me crazy. Thank you. Is it crazy? Because if you call me crazy, I'm gonna then I'm gonna prove it. One of the best captions was from Demi. It said no regrets. (laughs) No, not at all. Um and what would my caption be? Oh. I go for blood. Oh, oh, I mean. Oh, but come I, on. I want you to think about something for a second. Okay. I don't, excuse my microphone. It was slipping away. Uh, think about this for just a minute. I don't know what setting you'd be in. Maybe you're in a kitchen. Okay. You're going to want some distance. If you're the guy about ready to unleash this, you finally are going to fess up to, to your bad actions. You're going to want some distance between you and her way more than arm's length, i.e. the other side of a counter or an island or something like that, right? Yeah. Now, you know, I go, hey, babe, because, of course, you're you're dating an old Hooters girl. The guy's going to sound like that. Hey, babe. Yeah. I got something to tell you. I cheated on Samantha with you. You have to have the wherewithal to drop your whatever you're wearing and your underwear and literally do a... And you're, uh, do you do a a swing around like a helicopter (laughs) and a whip and wham, right there? I mean, do you, you got to realize this is, you got to be engaging and starting your go off when you're doing the takeoff to get it in his face. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's not like you're just like, oh yeah, watch this. And there it is. I mean, you're getting to it. Let's analyze. So first I was thinking, what if she was wearing a skirt and no underwear? But uh, then on your period that that's that that was my instantaneous thought Thank was you. no I'm going to be wearing underwear yes. okay yes probably dark right but if that, I'm wearing a, if I'm wearing a skirt then at least it's, it might be a little bit easier but it's not honestly without getting too much into the nitty gritty that I even if I'm wearing pants like let's say I'm wearing like stretchy Lululemons or something mm-hmm. I can actually do it pretty quickly. And I've been doing it my whole life, you know? Right, but you still have to do a, a level of disrobing. But that not, no, you don't. No, I can shove, my, I can put my hand down there I'm not looking really either. quickly, uh-huh. get in there and f- flip it out. So yeah. on that note, though, yeah. I thought two things. Did she think about this before? Think about doing it. Yeah, because if you're cooking, couldn't you throw a wooden spoon? Right. If I get news like that (laughs) and we're in the kitchen, my first reaction is actually going to be yelling, maybe a little scream scream crying. Yeah, sure. Or punching, which is terrible. I know we start out with like the Shiner story. I'm not like saying that I'm not condoning domestic violence. I was going to say, she did say domestic violence. Not a good thing. I think that my initial reaction would want to be that. Like, you hurt me, so I want to hurt you. Well, yes, but I don't know yeah. how else Your to hurt you. Your emotions take total control in a situation yes. like that. Yeah, like if somebody says they cheated on me, you what? Yeah. And then I clock you. But that was way more powerful than me throwing a fist. That is yeah. so smart, I think. And I don't even care if anybody knows. Because don't cheat on me. Oh, everybody knows now yes. between the people following her. and So that makes me think that she had thought about this before. Yeah. That, and, and you know... And I, it's going to stop you. Okay, have you ever gotten in an argument with your significant other? And me and my my boyfriend, we will fight about something. We just fought about something recently. I don't even remember what it was. It no. doesn't even matter. Isn't that the way it, most uh, of them right. go? Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't even enough for me to remember. Mm-hmm. But I was trying to stay mad, right? I was bound and determined to be mad. And he did something. I was trying to stay mad. Yes. And the header of this segment was, okay, it's official. I'm not crazy yet. You, ma'am, do not get to claim that if you just made that statement. But if, if, oh, but he did something and it made me laugh right away. And he goes, I know you want to laugh. I know you want this fight to be over. And I was like, no, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let me ask you a question. If, so if I got hit by a tampon, it would stop me in my tracks and yeah. I think I would laugh. Yeah, well, now, if he, uh, would you? That was going to be my question. So not cheating. I don't know. 
it's just some stupid argument. And 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 look, if you look, if if the argument happened and you look back at why you were arguing, it was really nothing. Looking back, like you just described the one. Yeah. But had in that argument, you thrown the tampon at your significant other. Would that be a? Would that be it? I mean, do you think that'd be like um, we have to discuss the uh, separation of the property? No, it wouldn't. I know for a fact that Zach gets grossed out by a lot of things. Like he doesn't want to hear me fart. Um, the three days that we shared a bathroom because my bathroom was going through a renovation, mm-hmm. he was like, "I can't share a bathroom with you." Oh my gosh! And I'm not even a gross person because I've seen his bathroom, and his bathroom is gross. But there's just certain things that he just doesn't want to share. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to smell my poop. Okay. Like, I think that's what it came down to is Mm because, well, I had to poop somewhere. I didn't have a toilet in my bathroom for for a week. So I had to use his. So when when it comes to him, I think he would definitely be so mad. Mm. But I think eventually he would he would have to laugh it off. I, think I don't so. know how I'd react. I just do not know how. Um, it I, stops I don't know. you. It stops you in your tracks. You, there's nothing to be said at that moment. <laughs> there is no. nothing to be. I mean, what do you say? What was that? A tampon? I mean, no, because you saw me rip it out. Yeah, and well, fling even it at if you. you didn't, like, let's say my back's to you because I'm so pissed when you said it, and I did the as you described the reach down and yeah. you know, I mean, oh my god, <laughs> this is the best thing ever. I don't think I would have the balls to do it. But I want to. I do. <laughs> You're I, like waiting for the situation. Now. I know. You're like, this is added you into know, my arsenal. You know how they say things like uh, movies will influence people's actions oh, sometimes? Oh, God, yeah. Every time I see James Bond, I wanted to be Daniel Craig for a day. And then other people will go, well, no, the idea came from some, someone. Someone yeah. had the idea of you know catapulting off a building or whatever <laughs> the case may be. This is one of those cases. I think more and more women are going to start flinging their tampons at guys when they're mad oh my gosh what have we started what did she start i'm just reporting i I know now i will say this i don't know why i don't but say i don't think not that i don't think tampons are gross i just think well it's just a part of life right it's not the most ungross thing let's be right i know it's a part of life for you right i've never had to have one put somewhere but if i said maybe between my eyes now i gotta watch out (laughs) but (laughs) if you flung poop at me well, I can't believe I'm going here. But what if are you, you a fl- monkey? Right. But if you flung poop at me, I would be mad for a long time. Oh, but, that's another option, too. But for me, like tampons, whatever. Well, okay. So she obviously erupted in the heat of the moment. Yeah. What if she played this one following along on the poop conversation? Not yeah. that we need to make two podcasts in a row about poop. I know. But imagine she was like, oh, okay. And then decided, because a lot of times, you know the breakup sex. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. the last round before you're like, all right, one last dive into this before it's over with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in almost every single ending relationship has breakup sex, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what if she would have potentially maneuvered and dropped a deuce on him? What would be worse, that or the tampon to the face? Oh, definitely the deuce. Really? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that is just, ugh. Okay. But I, but, and I, I here's what, and right here's, they're equal. They, those two are right on the same level. And here's why I say it though, is because, you know, I'll just, no, I don't. couples don't mind usually having intercourse if a girl is uh, getting a visit from Aunt Flo. So that's why I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay. So that's where my also, mind goes. I'm uh, probably not going to visit uh, the, um, shall we say, basement when that's happening uh, with uh, any part of my face. Uh, there, you no, know, but... There's a time, and it ain't that time for that. No, but I have a friend. I'm going to keep this as delicate as possible. Even though Good I know luck. It's the, I know it's the podcast. So I know we don't have to. But, but I found out that Gail listens sometimes now. Ooh, well, we're ugh. doing a good job I here. Know, I know. Now that I found out my mom listens, I'm like, oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> we, we got a long way behind us that uh, we were I know, able to get away with stuff. She's got so many podcasts to listen oh, to that I'm a like. reminder. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so I have a girlfriend who her significant other has pulled it out for her so they can have fun. So that's why I also think it's not that big of a deal. Also something I'm not doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, then yeah. that's the right. That's not for you. It's not for everybody. That's not, f- but that is for them. And yeah, I've heard even, oh, one step further, mm. pulling it out with their teeth. 
Oh, well, like I just, said, I will not be saying. visiting certain sections of the uh, map, if you will. Yeah. While, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, yeah, we'll not be parting the Red Sea at that point in time. How you like that? Did that stay safe? Yes. Almost be- biblical. Before we go. Oh, God. Uh, so I want to tease what I want to talk about. So you next don't think week. she's crazy, though, by the way, real quick, before mm-hmm. you go, you do not think, it may be momentary hysteria, but not crazy. No, no, okay. especially because she's been cheated on. Fair, no. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I'm, uh, yeah. For next week, I want to get into something. But but don't worry, this is not the end. Uh, next week, I want to get into this rabbit hole that I want to see if you know anything about this because I can't stop now. Okay. Do you know anything about Rose Kennedy? Um. Well, here's the thing. It's, I, it's on some of the Kennedys. I don't know all the information. Okay, so my mom was of a generation. She would have obviously been alive when JFK was assassinated. And you always hear stories about the Kennedys. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. Uh, there, there, there was a lot of cheaters, a lot of sleeping around. No, this is way worse. So, I, And this is what I want to talk about. Rose Kennedy, I saw this Reddit thread, and then I couldn't stop. Rose Kennedy uh, had a lobotomy. Like a brain surgery type thing. I feel like I've heard pieces of this. Okay, we'll talk about more of it next week because it is so fascinating on why that happened. Because you're right, there's a lot of controversy around the Kennedys. But this one... Oh, there was potential murder with... Was it... Was it Ted Kennedy? I can't remember. I don't want to the, the DUI. Yeah, the yes, DUI yes. and then the driving the car off a pier. Yes. Got yes. that family. Which, Jeez. by the way, is so secession-like. If you've watched secession, it's, it's... Well, maybe they got the idea from there. Pro- Again, movies giving ideas. Yeah, right. Yes. But you know, Somebody you think is going to pull a tampon out and throw it at somebody's face in a movie. That's going to happen. It's gonna I'm be a telling Seth- you, this is coming in a movie. It's going to be a Seth Rogen movie. That's oh, my prediction. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, before we do, though, on a lighter note, so one of my girlfriends and I were talking about the funny things that you used to do in the 90s before we had cell phones. Oh, right. And I said, I have to ask Scott if he's done these three things that we talked about. All right, hit me. All right, the first one is, when the water was running out of the sink, did you ever put your phone your pointer finger and your thumb around the water while it was running. You would just put your point. No, you didn't do this like this, like point your pointer finger, not your pinky. Take your pointer oh, finger. Pointer finger. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, like I know making, my fingers high. Yeah, like what? You're, like what? you're making the, you're right. Like you're making the okay, the okay sign, but you, you put your fingers around the water that's streaming out of the sink. No, no. But why would that have had to have stay in the nineties before technology and cell phones? Well, we're just saying that's when we did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no. Did you ever do this one? When you were grounded in your room, you know the little uh, stopper, but it's the little spring yeah. on the back. Bring, of- bring, bring, yes. Bring. Did you yeah. sit there forever and just boing it? <laughs> Probably. Until your mom was like, stop boinging this bread uh, This punishment's for you, Gail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, did, you did boing? I or probably did, did that. Okay. Yeah. It's and a then, fun sound. I can't help it. And then the last one was one that we talked about. It's the about. boner sound effect. How can you it, not do it? <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one was we would sit in school with, remember they had the pink erasers and they were like kind of like squares. Yeah, Gavin has one. It's got kind of the slant on either side. Yes, yes of course. Yes. So uh, this could be done with either the regular pencil or the mechanical pencil, but it worked better with a regular pencil. We would poke holes. We would take the really sharp pencil. We'd be like, um, Mrs. Heidelberg, can I sharpen my pencil? So you go to the front of the classroom. Okay. <laughs> yes. And then it's really sharp. Yep. And then you would poke holes in to the eraser. Never did that. Never did that. It sounds like you didn't do any of the Although board I fun that I had. Enough, I am old enough to remember still using a crank pencil sharpener that was oh. uh, screwed to a desk. In my younger years, we yes. cranked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember my mom, and I don't know why this happened. I'm going to have to go back to her and ask her about this. We uh, we would always go to this auction at my mom's work. Hmm. And one of the things that I got was this huge uh, chalkboard from back in the day where it was it was on like two legs yeah, and it was very wide and there were screws on the side and then you, so you could flip it. Yeah. Like you'd flip it over. Yeah. Yes, I remember, yes. yeah. So my mom ended up buying one. That was one of my favorite things when I was growing up and she bought one of those old crank. Well, she gave pens- you the old, uh, 1980 school room. Yes, we had yeah. that. Yes. We had the 1980 school room. Eighties <laughs> and before even. Yeah. In my room. All right. I'll give you one. Okay. Uh, before technology, what are those things called that you uh, hold them? It looks like uh, a triangle came together at four points and you go, 
beep, beep, beep. You know, you, it's they, called. I, I, I yeah. just got asked this question the other day. What is it? Because I have to tell you why I got to ask this really quick and then I'll tell you the answer. Okay. One of my girlfriends, she has two kids. They're in their teens. This was Easter. So this is a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And she always does. You know how we've talked about hiding the Easter baskets? Yes. Yes. She does a scavenger hunt. Ooh, and slick. she's right. So she was like, I think I'm going to use. And she goes, Allie, what's that thing? And I said, it's called a fortune teller. Fortune teller. And you, it was always on who you were going to date. Yes. Yes. Mm. So what she did was, so, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay. Yep. Da, 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 da. And then you lift it up. Okay. Now you need to go look uh, behind the couch. And then behind the couch would be another clue. And then behind the couch would be that clue. And that would lead you to above the refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. So that's what she was doing. They're called fortune tellers. Oh my gosh. I know. Isn't that cool? That was good. Good memory on that one. I know. I remember those things coming around. Somebody tap you on the shoulder and they'd be like, hey, watch your fortune red. And you're like, yes. and you're in science class. You could care less about what they're teaching. And you're like, do, 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 do. you're going to be uh, dating Julie. Oh, okay. I, uh, I didn't know. Eh? I never said no. Yeah, no, me neither. Never said no. I'm trying to think of another thing that would always happen in class. I mean, besides spitballs every once in a while, that was Paul Carrick. He'd always do that and get in trouble and mm. have to go to the principal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the the straws back in the day had some, you know, there there was some skill. You know, you could they were firm and yeah. and you know, you could really shoot one. There's meat to it. What the heck else did they ban back in the day in school? Oh, does anybody remember final exam? Oh, you want to talk about technology before technology? Remember the old yellow Walkmans when they became popular the first time? I mean, they, they came back for like $1,000 uh -huh. a couple years ago. I don't know. Five people bought them. Yep. But do you remember the old Sony Walkman, yep. the yellow ones? Yes. All right. Well, that was the Walkman. But there were obviously 100,000 portable cassette players at the time that you'd walk uh, that you'd use. This is mm -hmm. way before earbuds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember being able to bring one to school at the end of a final exam so that you could listen to your favorite whatever if you finished early? Because yes! you had to be in. Oh, my God. <laughs> is this great or what? You had to be in there from 10 until 1130. Yeah. And if you were like me and answered B on every single question all the way through the test, you were done in 10 minutes. You could listen to, I don't know, Def Leppard. Yes. So <laughs> just a slight variation on it. We had the CD Discman. Okay. So yes, we would. And, and there would be, especially even at lunch and stuff too, that kids would bring in the big folder and then they would <laughs> fold it out. Okay, yep. I'm going to listen to. So not only did we have our backpacks, which were full. But then we also it's had... It's a miracle. We'll never have the hunchback in our lives because our backpacks created strong back muscles. That's right. Yes. That, although, isn't it weird that I never see anyone with a hunchback now? No. Maybe we all found so, milk. Why, I, I don't know. Why is it that there's so... When I grew up in this small church... Like there was like three old ladies with hunchbacks. Yes. Was it something in the water? Because now I never see a hunchback. I don't know. I thought it was osteoporosis where it wasn't that something that with calcium. Is that why there was always so many milk commercials when we were younger? Don't know. Because everyone had hunchbacks? I, d I don't know. <laughs> I always felt bad because you'd see somebody walking across the street at an L shape. And I'm like... Yeah. How do you look up? And I'm, oh, not, I'm not trying to be cruel or make fun of somebody. It was those things that go through your mind. You're like, oh, and you know how what? do you look up? I don't even want to talk about it because I feel like I'm going to jinx myself because I'm not even joking about this. I wish I was. So in school, I was, uh, I think I was a senior and there was a girl, we were getting ready for our school play. I was in the school play and so was she. And she was talking about having chin hair. And I was like, ew, oh my God, who has chin hair? That's not gross. Blah, blah, blah. She had some lady Then test I ended up getting like ah, the worst chin she, hair. She got lady testosterone. Yeah, so I feel like I can never make fun of anybody for anything because then it's going to come back on me. Because after that, oh, I had I'm the, not making fun of it. I'm just, it's oh, like, no. ooh, that's a look. I was. I, 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 I was, was making, I was making fun of her. I mean, we were just, we were playmates, like literally school play. So playmates. And we were playmates and I was like, girl, you got some chin hair. Oh my God. And I remember making fun of her. And then I ended up getting so much chin hair See, later that, on in that'll life. That'll be it. You know, all right, I'm going to tell you right now. if you're Which I don't it. have, by the way, anymore because I, I got electrolysis Listen, done. Listen, you did the deal. I want you to turn did to your side deal. and I want you to sit like you'd have decent posture. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to have a hunchback, you got to stand up just a little bit or something because your camera is a little bit angled. Uh, oh, there you go. Let's see here. I don't, where am I? Okay. Uh, I'm going to, all right, just I, turn, I don't even know how to, how turn to, to the side. I, here, I'll stand up and look. Okay. No, no, you're not going to have the hunchback. Uh, if you had, had a so bigger, if you had a bigger bulge on the back of your, uh, but underneath, right underneath your shoulders around that area, I'd start to get worried. Like the chin hair, like, don't be joking. I think I used to have great posture as I've gotten older. 
I definitely slunch more. And I don't know. Slunch? Is that a word? Yeah, it is now. No, that's technology doing it to us. It's the same as texting neck. Oh, wait, tech neck. Tech neck. Tech neck. It's the same thing. We are... It's our positions. Don't you, you know? feel like every day now that we're saying it? Because there's a couple of things that I, I've not, I'm not, I'm not even joking you, that I've wanted to start doing every single morning. I used to do this and I stopped doing it. And I'm like, wait a second, I need to re-implement this. So before work every single day, I would stand in the shower and do two or three things. And one of them was I would always think about what we were going to do for the day. So I was mentally ready. I would also pray. That's a, that's a me thing. Good place and to, good place in the shower. Exactly. With exactly. your record of falling, you might want to do a novena. But I think that one of the things that I want to, so I want to re-implement that, which is those two things. But I also have gone to so many women's conferences and they've talked about gratitude. So I thought maybe in the shower, should I not only think about what we're going to do for the day, pray, but also come up with, with like two or three points of gratitude. And I only need you to thank me one time in the show. You can come up with two or three others. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Every every day of the shower. But I was also thinking at the end of the end of the day. Well, wait, you only shower once every couple of days. Does that that's mean you're just sort of true. thankful? No, that's not true. I only wash my hair once a week. She's kind of thankful. I shower every day. I have to shower. I have to wash my grundle like every day. The grundle. I yes. love it. So, but I think what I should do at the end of the day, say you're watching TV, you're relaxing, don't you think at the end of the day we should all just lean our neck back a couple Thank times? You. Oh wait, what? No, I, you don't have to do your gratitude. Well, you oh, can do your gratitude do your, then. It sounds good, and you're looking at heaven. Thank you. Because I, I don't want a hunchback. Now that we've talked about it, I'm afraid I'm going to get a hunchback. No, although so, if you really want to do something gratitude wise, oh God. and you want to have some fun with it, what you could do the shower thing. I would recommend this: lay in bed. Wait till your partner falls asleep. Just, you know, they're at that point where they're finally out, you know, because you've been chatting with them for a while and they've just wanted to sleep. You know, you know, you know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> and um, and they're finally out. And you know, they're out. And all of a sudden, just you know, thank you. And then see how that goes for you. See how that goes. <laughs> oh, Zach would kill me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Have a great oh, week. Yeah. We're so thankful for you. You too. Bye. Well, that was fun. Wasn't that fun? That was fun. Do us a favor, will you? Subscribe. Share the Scott and Alley Not For Air podcast. Touch our buttons. We know you want to.